It's a tough one right here, man. First of all, I want to thank y'all for allowing me the opportunity to speak here today. It's a real honor to be able to appear here and to show love on behalf of my friend, my brother, a great man, a great leader, a great father, a great teacher, and a great friend, Nipsey Hussle. And I want to start off by showing some love to Lauren and Nipsey's children. I want to send Lauren, a lot of love for being the beloved queen to our king. See, what we lose focus on is that every real black man needs a real black woman in his life. Every time I would see Nip and Lauren out, they reminded me of me and my wife. It was, it was like black excellence. You love to see that. So with that being said, Lauren, my wife, my family, my kids, we're here for you. Wherever you need, whatever you need. If you need a shoulder to cry on, if you need a hug, if you just need to get away, we're here for you. We love you, baby girl. We always have and we always will. <sighs> Bear with me, y'all. I'm trying to stay strong for the homeboy nip right now. Stay down with me. <sighs> stay down with me. I got you, cuz. I got you. Next, I want to acknowledge Nipsey's father. See, because Nip has always benefited from having a strong man in his life. And his father clearly did a great job. He showed Nip how to be a strong man, a strong black man. It was always amazing when I would go to the store, because I would go to the store on my own solo, no security, pull up in the morning, pops being there, and I could just see the look on his face, and he was so proud of his boys for doing something in the community and doing something positive that was inspiring. And pops, I, I look at your face every time I come in the store and I just seen the joy, and I just want you to know that you may have lost a son, but you picked up another son in me. And now I gotta send a bundle of love to Nipsey's mother. Lord have mercy. What great strength that she showed. She showed a lot of great strength. She helped us out this weekend. Mother, I wanna say this to you dearly without reading. When you said what you said to us, you really uplifted us. We had no understanding. We had no, we had no nothing. And you gave us what we needed. You gave us the sense and the purpose to know and understand that it was all right. You, you made us understand that it was all right because we did not understand it at all. We had no clarity and we was more or less concerned about you and concerned about Lauren and concerned about the family, but you made us feel good. And we want to thank you for that, Mother, for being strong and giving us our strength. I also want to thank all the other mothers in the house right now that's been praying for Nipsey's mother, that's been praying for Lauren. We appreciate all that love from you women. And um, I want to say this, if it so happens to be that your kids die before you, Nipsey's mother prepared us for this day in the future. Thank you, mother. I didn't grow up with Nip. I didn't grow up with him in the neighborhood as a kid, but I watched Nip grow up in front of me. I watched him grow into a full-grown man and an incredible young businessman. I still remember the first time when he pushed up on me with his tape. Most rappers, when they push up on Snoop Dogg with a tape, this is their line. Hey, dog, listen to my music. I can make you a million dollars. Nipsey's line was, hey, homie, listen to my music, just give it a listen. That's it? No record deal? You don't want to get put on? So to me, he had vision to know and understand that I don't want to be handed out nothing. I'm gonna come get mine. But at the same time, but at the same time, 
looking for that clarification, looking for that, that confirmation. You know, just listen to it, homie. The first time I got his CD, I didn't listen to it. I told him that. I kept it 100 with him. I'm like, K-Mac gave me your CD at football practice. Cause I wasn't listening to that. I was at football practice. Then, about a week later, the C he gave me another CD. So I'm rolling up a blunt in the back seat of the car on the CD. So I open the CD up. Oh, I, the homie know. Cause no. He know the story already. So I'm just telling y'all so y'all be in light. So I took the CD out and I popped the CD in. I was like, damn, cuz it's hard. So I'm like, K-Mac, the little homie hard, cuz let me get down with it. Long story short, we ended up connecting, we ended up making music together, we ended up making a, a brotherhood, we ended up creating a bond. We, we created something that was special. And, and what was crazy was, when he first started, a lot of people was like, you know, he looked like me, he this, he that, but I don't think so. I think, you know, it was the fact that he was tall, he was lanky, he had braids, he had that LA mentality. And he claimed the gang, so I mean, it was natural to be categorized. <laughs> but one thing that me and Nip had was a kind spirit. We had that spirit of love, of like Sam said, just magnating, like people magnate to, to Snoop Dogg and they magnate towards Nipsey. It's like when we met each other, it was like a magnet coming together. We had the same spirit. But what was crazy was Nip mentality was stronger than a rapper that's been in the game for 15 years. And I'll give you an example of that. One of the first conversations me and Nipsey had, he was talking to me about, hey, cuz, you need to do a, a amusement park, cuz, doggy land, cuz. <laughs> I'm like, for real? He like, yeah, cuz, with 40 ounce uh, roller coasters and, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, you Snoop Dogg, cuz, everybody come see you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, come check your amusement park. I'm like, cuz, you tripping. So he kept, like, every time I would see him, he would always bring it up, he would bring it up. So like the fifth time he said it to me, or was it the sixth time? Yeah, the sixth time he said it to me. Let me get politically correct. Yeah, cuz the sixth time he said it to me, I said, Nip, why don't you just do it for me, cuz? Cuz I don't understand the dynamics of what you're saying, cuz you, I'm an old school nigga, I'm A, B, C, D. You didn't went off into the matrix, cuz, you gotta, so with that being said, Nip ended up creating a square and he ended up buying property and he ended up having things like Vector 90 and he ended up doing things in the community and, and he built his own doggy land. He built his own world. He built his own thing that people from around the world are starting to come to, take pictures of, stand in front of, immortalize this man. The things that he wanted for me, he did for himself. But he had vision for me that I didn't even have for myself. So I want to thank you, mother and father, for bringing Nipsey into this world, for giving us Nipsey. I thank y'all for that. And for, those, and for those that knew Nipsey Hustle personally, you knew he had nothing but love for every gang member from Southern California. I don't care what neighborhood you was from. One conversation that me and Nip had once upon a time was, cuz, you know, the uh, Trey's like your music too, cuz. He like, no, they don't, cuz. I'm like, yeah, they do, nigga. Everybody like our music, cuz. It, it ain't like that. When you make music and you come from the dirt, one thing about a neighborhood, we gonna respect another man from another neighborhood, even if he ain't from our neighborhood, if he come from where we come from. And I, I explained that to Nick. And when I was explaining it to him, he was, he was getting it, but he wasn't getting it, but I was like, look at what you're doing. You make records with YG. You made records with Game. You made records with Probably. You making records with Bloods. Cripping and Bloods making records, and y'all really love each other, and y'all bonding with each other. Y'all pulling up together. You in their neighborhoods. You loving them, and they loving you. You are a peace advocate, Nip. That's what you are. And the reason why I know this is because that's what I am. You know, real recognize real. I know what he is, I know what he was. And the marathon is gonna continue. Look at the love, look at the spirit. This man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it like this. This man got a letter from Barack Obama, man. My last words will be,
For God so loved the world that he gave us a good crib. The late great neighborhood nip. Rest in peace, girl. Neighbors. Please welcome. Please welcome.